Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Corinthians 13. We're almost done. Start at verse 1. Yep. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Now, you see that? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, meaning not only do you know different languages, when you speak, you have an eloquent way of putting words together. You sound magnanimous when you speak. It's like, whoa, that boy can talk right there. It says, and if you don't have charity, that charity goes back to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That charity is the royal law. That charity is simply Greek for love. Love of your neighbor. That's what charity breaks down to. It says, and if you don't got that, you're like sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Watch this. Give me 2 Samuel 16. Hold on. We're coming right back here. Second Samuel chapter 16, and all I want is verse 23. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was if, as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So speaking to this brother Ahithophel was like somebody went to the oracle of God himself. Go ahead. He so, sound good. He, his counsel were right. Go ahead. Was that it? So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Mm. So this brother, when you read the history, the Most High had changed the counsel and had them all go against Ahithophel, and this dude committed suicide. Because he was counseling against David. When y'all read the history and y'all only read the next chapter. And his counsel was right, because he said, David will be here. This is how you get David, and you can kill him. But the Lord had that. He put a spirit in there and changed that whole thing around. Go back to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. Uh-huh. And though I have the gift of prophecy. And though I have the gift of prophecy. And understand all mysteries. And you understand all. You can go through Daniel 7. You can go through Revelation 12. You bad. Go ahead. And all knowledge. And all knowledge. Go ahead. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So Paul said, if you don't got love for your neighbor, you're nothing. Remember, I'm going to give an example of that. Judas Iscariot. He was casting out devils out of people. He was healing the sick, but he had hatred against Christ. He was rebellious against Christ. So that says, I am nothing. Give me that Sirach 19 as a precept. Sirach 19, 24. You have all these understandings of prophecy and knowledge and mysteries and faith, but you don't have charity. You don't love your neighbor. You don't love your brother. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 24. Mm-hmm. 
He that has small understanding, he that has small understanding, and feareth God, and fears God, is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. You see that? You transgress the royal law. That's what it's saying. Go back to Corinthians. First Corinthians. No, chapter. I'm sorry. Give me Acts eight eight nineteen. I'm sorry. Acts eight nineteen. Acts chapter 8, verse 19, saying, give me also this power. So this guy, when you read this history, this dude, what was his name? Mm. Uh, Simon. Simon. He wanted spiritual power. And read verse 19 again. Saying, give me also this power that on whomever, whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Read. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Come on. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. See that? He wanted spiritual power not for the love of God, not for the love of his neighbor, not to help his people. He wanted to establish himself as some great one. Peter condemned him right there. From there, go back to us, uh, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Now that's a heavy verse right there, because when you think of the word charity, people say, oh, I give food to the homeless. Right. Or somebody says, I sac such and such, is, uh, he has charity because he sacrificed his life. That verse right there proves that charity has nothing to do with giving uh, goods to feed the poor or sacrificing yourself. Watch this. I'm going to show you all something. Get First Maccabees 5. You want to sacrifice yourself. You give your body to be burned. You, 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 you allow yourself to be put to death. Brother, isn't that charity? Surely that's charity if there ever was charity. Watch this in Maccabees. Uh, what verse? Uh, first Maccabees chapter 5. Let's start at verse 55. I want y'all to pay close attention. First, Ma First Maccabees chapter 5, verse 55. Now what time as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Galad, and Simon his brother in Galilee before Ptolemais, John the son Joseph. of Joseph, uh, Joseph the son of Zacharias and Azarias, captains of the garrisons, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. So he heard the warlike deeds of Judah Maccabees in them. Go ahead. Verse 57. Wherefore they said, let us also get a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. You hear what he says? Let us also get a name for ourselves. Go ahead. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went toward Jamne Jamnia. Then came Gorgias and his men out of the city to fight against them. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight and pursued unto the borders of Judea. And there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. Read. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought to do some valiant act. You see that? So you would think that this brother had charity. But no, his, it had nothing to do with charity. He wanted to make a name for himself. He was disobedient. Hey, where's the one where Judah's brother stabbed the elephant? Y'all know where that one is? Somebody find me that. First, first Maccabees chapter 6, verse 46. Which done, <laughs> which done, he crept under the elephant and thrust him under and slew him. Whereupon the elephant fell down upon him, and there he died. So this was one of Judah's brothers that died creeping under the elephant and died. Many times you may think things are done out of charity, a charitable spirit. No, but it was done because you want some recognition, and it goes badly for you. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Charity suffereth long. Charity, the love of brethren, it suffers long. And is kind. And charity is kind. Charity envieth not. The spirit of charity does not have a jealous spirit in it. It's not envious. It's, it doesn't look at brothers or sisters' good works and have a... Envy breaks down to hate. Let me tell you that. 
emulation. You know, why, why did God give him that gift or her that gift and I don't got it? It says charity envieth not. Go ahead. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity does not boast itself. Go ahead. Is not puffed up. The spirit of charity is not puffed up. That was verse 4? Yes, sir. Give me uh, Galatians 5.26. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. You see that? Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Because that is not the spirit of charity. Go ahead. Provoking one another. Provoking one another. Envying one another. Envying one another. That's that hating one another. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Go back to Galatians. I mean, go back to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It's not me, me, me. Me, I built this. I did this. I, me, me. Me, 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 me. Remember that little Puerto Rican simple ass brother? I built I you and I see. I did this and I, oh, get the hell out of here. And let's see you build another one in your lying little tear. He didn't build this. He ain't build this. Exactly. The hell is this? Read that again. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. From there, give me 1 John 2 and 9. And let's read down to 11. 1 John 2, verse 9. 1 John chapter 2, verse 9. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother. He that says he's in the light and hateth his brother. Number one. That's that whole crew that ran up out of here. I'm in the, and they all say I'm in the truth. You ever notice that when people do that? Every, let me tell you something. Everybody that leaves the truth, that leaves this, these commandments, hates their brother, does not congregate, they say, I'm still in the truth. You saw from Austin to Chicago, from Chicago to New York, back and forth, the same spirit. Read it again. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. The Bible says you're in darkness even until now. Go ahead. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. You love your brother, you're going to congregate with your brother. You're going to fellowship with your brother. You in the light, you're obedient to the law. Go ahead. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. You have no occasion of stumbling in his truth. Go ahead. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness. He that hates his brother is in darkness. Come on. And walketh in darkness. And not only that, but you walk in darkness. Go ahead. And knoweth not whither he goeth. You don't know where the hell you're going in this world. Go ahead. Because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Because darkness has blinded your eyes. Go back to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. So charity does not rejoice in iniquity. I knew that nigga was wicked. Ha, 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 ha. You, I'm glad you fell. Oh, I'm so happy you committed adult. What? What? Stop. Hold on. Pump the brakes. Charity does not rejoice in sin. Go ahead. But rejoiceth in the truth. It, but it rejoices in the truth. Give me that in Proverbs 24, 16. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. 16. For a just man falleth seven times. The Bible says a just man falleth seven times. Go ahead. And riseth up again. And rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Come on. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. The enemy here is the enemy of your people. Somebody you may not like. It says rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. Go ahead. And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbles. And don't let your heart be glad when you see him stumbling in his truth. Go ahead. Lest the Lord see it mm -hmm. and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. Now see that? That's what will happen. The Lord will turn and say, you know what? Because, because one man's test is all of our tests. You think the Lord's testing that one brother, but it's really a test for the rest of us. Let's see how they're going to deal towards that brother that stumbled right there. Let's just see. Here's the test. From there, go back to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Beareth all things. So charity bears all things. Go ahead. Believeth all things. Charity, believe. Whatever this Bible says, we believe the whole book. It ain't no, well, I don't believe this part of the Bible. You believe the whole thing. Go ahead. Hopeth all things. And charity 
hopes all things. Go ahead. Endureth all things. And charity, Christ said, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So if you got that charitable spirit, male or female, we're going to receive the kingdom. Go ahead. Verse 8. Charity never faileth. When you got that spirit of love of your brother, it will never fail. That's what the scriptures say. Go ahead. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Meaning they're going to come to pass. That prophecy was uh, come to pass already. That's what it means. Go ahead. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. The gift of speaking in tongues was temporary. It ended. Go ahead. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And the knowledge that we have as men and women shall vanish away. Because when the Lord come, that's the knowledge we're going to deal with. What verse was that? Verse 8. Verse 8. Go ahead. Verse 9. For we know in part... And we prophesy in part. Anybody that tells you they got 100% truth is an idiot, a devil, and a liar. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. If you know all things, that's why the angel said to Ezra, how much does fire weigh? Where does the air begin and end? Where do the seven streams under the earth begin? You cannot comprehend that. Read that again. Verse 9. Right. <laughs> for, we, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Everything we know is done in part. Okay. Read. Verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. But when that which is perfect, which is Christ, is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So Christ is the one that's perfect. So you mean to tell me you got Negroes running the earth now talking about they got 100% truth. They know it all. And, and if y'all, any of y'all online, because I know it's y'all online, be listening to these dumb bums, you're an idiot. You are an idiot. Now, I got 100% truth. You can't even get yourself out the ghetto. Your shoes run over. Your car broke down. You can't even fix that. The hell is that? You got to beg your wife for a sandwich. You got 100% truth. And your wife's still smoking cigarettes with pants on. You're crazy. And y'all listening to these idiots. What verse was that? That was verse 10. That was verse 10. Give me uh, Isaiah 54, 13. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. That's why when Christ comes, it says, when he that is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Why? Because we're all going to be taught of God. Christ is going to teach us from Genesis all the way up. And guess what? He might even go into before Genesis. <laughs> That's something right there. I said something right there. I'm going to put that on the table. Leave that for another day. Back to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So this verse 11 really goes back to verse 1. He didn't change the subject. We act, we're not uh, in the spirit of men when we can't deal with our neighbor as brothers. When you don't have that spirit of love towards your neighbor, that's not the spirit of a man. Let's read it again. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Let me give you a precept. Look at Luke 7.31. This is what Christ said about the men of his generation. Luke chapter 7 verse 31. Because you know children get mad over anything. You take a, try taking a toy from them or tell them to go to bed. Watch how mad they get. Read that. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. So Christ said, those Israelites are like children in the marketplace. They wanted Christ and the apostles to dance to their tune, to follow what they say. You ever get a group of kids and you always got this one child that wants to monopolize everything, control all. You do this and you go over there and you sit down and you do this. But then you get that one child that says, I'm not doing that. 
Now that child is trying to control everything mad as hell. He won't listen to me. She won't listen to me. We'll go back to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Mm-hmm. For now we see through a glass darkly. To see through the glass that we're looking through darkly is the Bible. Because like it says in Job, it says the wisdom of God is, wisdom of God is double. We haven't seen all the double meanings that is written therein, which we're asking the Lord to open our eyes. So that's why when people say they got 100% truth, just shut the hell up. There's layers upon layers to this Bible. The white man knows that. Read that again. For, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. But then face to face. Get that in Ezekiel 20. We going to see the Lord face to face. That's why up above it, where we, where we just read in verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. That goes with the face to face. So look at Ezekiel 20. In verse 33. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. You see that? You read that stuff about fury poured out. The same God that destroyed the entire earth with water is the same God that's going to destroy this place with fire. It's the same God. Go ahead. And he ain't going to play with us. Grace time will be officially over. Go ahead. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. So he ain't gathering everybody. He's only gathering the Israelites. That's what you, when you read up above it from verse 31 down, it's talking about the Israelites. This is for you at home that said, well, that's everybody. No, verse 31 stipulates the children, the house of Israel. Read on. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Come on. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. The same wilderness when we left out of Egypt is the same wilderness we going right back there again. Go ahead. And there will I plead with you face to face. There, see, that's the Corinthians. There will I plead with you face to face. That's what we just read in 1 Corinthians 13. Go ahead. Verse 36. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, mm-hmm. so will I plead with you saith the Lord God. That's right. And I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Because he's going to teach us the laws all over again and tell us not to break these laws. He's going to give it to us again. Go ahead. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. And all those rebellious spirits that's there among us are going to get put to death. Go ahead. And them that transgress. You can read about that in Zechariah 13, 1 to 4. Go ahead. And them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country. Because you know when the Lord sets up his, uh, his men, somebody going to run their damn mouth. That's what Christ gave in a parable about. Remember said, these, uh, no, 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 not that part. When it said the men, the northern kingdom came at the 11th hour. And it said, you made them equal unto us. He said, take what is yours and go your way. And you'll have a problem with it. The Lord's going to set up who he wants. And that's, you have nothing to say about it. Go ahead. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. They won't enter. See, he's going to bring them out of the country, but they will not enter into the land of Israel, the promised land, the new land. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. You shall know that I am the Lord. Back to 1 Corinthians 13. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse verse, 12 again. Verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, Mm -hmm. but then face to face. Now I, now I know in part, but then shall I know. You see that? That's the key right there. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. Who's speaking? The Apostle Paul. And he saw visions and wonders. He says, I only know in part. So why do you get brothers today talking about they got 100%? They're insane. So it says, now I know in part. Go ahead. But then shall I know. Even as also I am known. Now to explain the glass, look at James one twenty three. I just want to explain that. Look through a glass darkly. James one twenty three, and down. James chapter one verse twenty three. Mm-hmm. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So he's given an analogy of a mirror. 
You look at your natural face in a glass. Now, the glass is symbolic of the Bible. Go ahead. For he beholdeth himself. You behold yourself in the scriptures, and, how you're supposed to be. Go ahead. And goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see that? Read. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty is the new covenant in Christ. You look at it. You study it. Go ahead. And continue it therein. And you continue in what it says. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Back to 1 Corinthians 13, the last verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Now that's a great mystery. I wish somebody could tell the Israelite camps that spewing hatred for one another that the greatest of these three, the greatest of faith, hope, and charity is charity. That's what's going to get us over. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1 as we close out. So we can't fulfill Zephaniah 2 and 1 until we can fulfill 1 Corinthians 13. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Because you hear the black and Latin, Latin people, let's, we need to gather together. We need to unite. But we cannot obey Zephaniah 2 and 1 until we obey 1 Corinthians 13. Until we obey, love your neighbor as you love yourself like we've been reading today. Read it again. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Now we know where the nation not desired based alone. Not just the scriptures that we read, but all those slew of videos we looked at. You know, if you didn't know today that you're not desired as a people, now you know. Go ahead. Verse 2. Before the decree bring forth. Before the decree that the destruction is coming, bring forth. Go ahead. Before the day pass as the chaff. Before the day pass as the chaff, because destruction is coming. Go ahead. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Uh-oh. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. That's right. Read. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Seek ye the Lord, all you Israelites of the earth. That's what the meek is. Go ahead. Which have wrought his judgment. Which have wrought his judgment. Come on. Seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Seek meekness, which is humility. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I want to be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. How about you, Rellis? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.